Hey guys, it's Chelsea from The Financial Diet, and this week's video is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. And today I want to talk about a topic near and dear to my 31-year-old heart. <laughs> and that is things I no longer spend money on now that I am in my 30s. Now, I am sure that there are plenty of things that I spend money on now that I will look back on in a few years and be like, what a waste. But I do feel even in the short years since I've been in my mid 20s, I have come to a much better relationship with what is and isn't deserving of my money. And interestingly, in this whole COVID situation where our social activities are rare and precious, I think it's been clarifying that there were a lot of things we were doing before that we were either doing too much or not appreciating enough or simply not doing only in the times they really mattered to us. Like was every time we went to a bar for happy hour pre-COVID really worth it? That's a no. And while there are some things that are still going to be worth it, even in these crazy times, that bar has to be a lot higher by necessity. But hopefully the bar of what we're spending our money on is also just naturally being raised with every year we have to be older and wiser on this planet. So without further ado, here are 12 things I no longer buy now that I'm in my 30s. Number one is cheap alcohol. Now listen, there is nothing wrong with a $10 bottle of wine. You can actually get some pretty great wines at that price point. I'm not saying that every single time I drink alcohol, it is only the most expensive option possible. But the time in my life when I am willing to drink a $3 bottle of wine that gives me a raging, raging sulfite sugar headache the next day, is long gone. At that point, I would just rather not drink. And quite frankly, if we abide by the general idea that we shouldn't be drinking all the time anyway, it's all the more reason to make those times that you do make yourself a nice cocktail or enjoy a beautiful glass of wine, something that is in and of itself to be enjoyed. It's special. It's not just something you're getting at the cheapest possible price to maximize your value for dollar. Because at the end of the day, this isn't like rice. Like you don't just like need to have it in your cabinet all the time. This is something that should be seen as a treat. And at least for me, someone who gets truly devastating hangovers, if I drink too much or if I drink really cheap stuff, it is just not worth the next day being totally awash because I cannot stop my head from throbbing. No more Two Buck Chuck, no more Boone's Farm, no more Carlos Rossi, no more of that like really, really janky stuff. It just, just can't do it. Number two is going out clothes. Now let's be clear, who the hell is going out anymore anyway? So I guess those would have been a waste of money whether or not I was still buying them. But in all seriousness, there used to be an entire part of my wardrobe that was clothes that can only be worn in the kind of places that bring you bottles of alcohol with sparklers sticking out of them. We're talking like bandage dresses, like really, really intricate low cut tops that can't be worn basically anywhere. Um, you know, those like reformation dresses that are like for some reason a plunging neckline to your belly button and then a slit up to your hoo-ha. Like just clothes that cannot be worn anywhere. And even if they could, would you really be comfortable in them? So I used to have clothes like this for the rare occasions that I would be going out and then they would rest unused in my closet at least 364 days a year. I no longer buy those things. Am I going to be the only, on like the rare occasion I go to a club for like a bachelorette party, am I gonna be the only one there in like a shift dress that would be appropriate for work? Maybe, but I'm okay with that because I'd rather have stuff that I use all the time. Number three is makeup that looks good in theory. Like many of us ladies, I am often getting recommended beauty gurus, vloggers, influencers on my various social platforms. And some of them are actually pretty enjoyable to follow, but I had to stop because ultimately 90% of what they put on their face maybe looks good on them. Although often it just kind of looks interesting rather than like actually good or flattering but it certainly won't look good on me. I have nothing but respect for people who can pull off things like blue eyeshadow. I am not one of those people truly complexion wise should really be sticking to an extremely neutral color palette and that's just okay. But if you're constantly being exposed to people who are doing these really sort of audacious things with their makeup, you're gonna start feeling like, hmm, maybe I should contour. No, you should not. I literally look like the V for Vendetta mask when I contour, I look insane. So. No more of that for me in my 30s. 
Number four is basically any pre-made foods. I mean, there are a few things that I still buy pre-made for convenience or because I really can't recreate them at home. Like I always have um, at least one bag of frozen like pot stickers in my freezer because they're a great quick meal. They go great as a side dish with other things I'm cooking and also like it's very difficult and time consuming to make good gyoza or dumplings at home. Like I would love to learn to do that someday, but even if I could do it, it's like an, it's an all day activity. And sometimes you're not trying to spend all day making dumplings. So aside from a few items like that, that are very much outside of my skill set, or like pizza dough, I'll, I'll buy pre-made pizza dough. There's really nothing that I buy pre-made just for the simple fact that the vast majority of items are better and way cheaper if you make them from scratch. Like if you make a batch of red sauce, you can make it exactly to your specifications and you can make a huge, huge, huge pot of it, which then can be portioned and frozen beautifully and be way better than the jarred stuff. To me, it's almost always a better idea to go homemade than pre-made when it comes to like prepared foods, just because you're paying such a huge markup for them to be doing all the work for you. And it's usually not as good. But the reason why I'm able to do that in my 30s is because I've gotten much better about batch cooking, meal planning, and shopping ahead. I used to be such a bad shopper, and now that I can really plan, I am basically always ahead of my cooking schedule and know what I'm making. Number five is shots. Aside from the fact that my 31-year-old body and bones do not need shots, I also just like, what a waste of money. What a waste of money. I don't know what it is where you guys live, but in Manhattan, it's like $12 for a fucking like a espresso cup of tequila. No, it's very much not worth it. Number six is hardcover books. I used to be very interested in like, ooh, I want to get it when it's hardcover because I like the look of hardcover books on my shelves and feel like that looks fancy and like adult and all that stuff. But hardcover books are really effing expensive. A lot of them are like $40. Like I don't, no thank you, I can't afford this. I'm actually much more into um, uh, reading books on my phone now, uh, just with like the, the app, Amazon Books or what have you, or listening to books or getting the paperback uh, because I feel like I used to be really concerned with like the visual amount of books that I had and how smart I looked and how fancy the books were. Uh, and now I couldn't care less and I just want a convenient way to read. Um, so actually many of the books I now buy, I don't even ever have a physical copy of. Um, but when I do buy physical copies of books, I almost always wait for the paperback version because I am not trying to spend that kind of money. No, thank you. Number seven, dormy posters. Uh, I think we all know what these look like. I mean, you have the classics, you have Scarface, you have like the Chat Noir, you have um, like the Pink Floyd covers on those girls' butts. You have, what other ones do you have? You have like Breakfast at Tiffany's looking into the window. Like you have like just big ass, you know. I The last one that I had that was like, I got it years ago. I just like had never found anything else to put in that frame. Um, and it just kept coming with me from home to home. It's just one that just says, just says Paris. And I was like, as I took that down recently, I was like, this is an era. Like, this is an era that's ended. You don't need any things that look like you probably had it in a dorm room. I also never lived in a dorm room, so like I have zero excuse to have had those kind of things. But I just feel like it's not that they look cheap or whatever. I mean, sometimes posters can be expensive. It's more the fact that it just looks like you're not you're not exercising your own tastes and your own interests. Like you're not learning anything about you when you look at that kind of stuff. You're just like, ah, this looks like something that was like in a Spencer's Gifts. Don't need that anymore in, in your life past 30. Number eight is anything for a guy. Now I know you're like, Chelsea, you're married. Fair enough. You also only work with women, so you barely ever come into contact with men. Fair enough as well. But even still, I used to spend, and I'm sure a lot of uh, women who are, you know, imprisoned in the, uh, you know, in gender norms can relate to this, um, just spending money on things, doing things that you're not necessarily so into because a guy's into, for me, it's like going to like jam band music festivals and car shows and like all kinds of things that I had truly no business doing, but the guy wanted to. 
But even now I'm married and sometimes, you know, Mark is going to go out with the boys and they're going to do wings and they're like, hey, wives can come. And like, first of all, that framing is just horrible. But second of all, I'm not, I don't want to go have wings and beers with the bros and listen to them talk about, you know, I would say sports, but my husband doesn't watch sports. It's like, it's worse than that. It's like e-sports. Like they'll talk about like competitive computer gaming, which is like truly the darkest subject matter. Anyway, point being, I'm like, my time is precious, my social activity time even more so. So anytime it's a guy's trying to do some guy activity that I'm not into, that's a hard pass for me and my money. Number nine is late or overdraft fees. Basically any cost that you're incurring by not paying close enough attention to your money. This is one of those things that when I look back at my 20s and the amount of money that I spent on those kinds of things, I just truly cringe because nothing could have been more avoidable and even more so like you shouldn't just be watching your money closely so you don't incur those fees. You should also be watching it closely because it's very, very beneficial to have a super close understanding of your money at any given time. So now I'm pretty religious about regularly checking my accounts, my statements, my credit score, all of that. And as a result, I basically have never run into those types of issues since, which is huge because they used to cost me a ton of money slash credit issues. So that's a big change. Number 10 is really inconvenient travel. Um, now this one might be a little bougie. You might be like, oh, fancy Chelsea with her, you know, Delta Sky Miles and to fair to an extent, although I really prioritize um, because travel is a pretty big necessity for my husband and I for a variety of reasons. Um, we really prioritize, uh, you know, gaming travel to make it as cost effective as possible in the long term and loyalty programs and credit cards are a part of that. Fair enough, mea culpa. That being said though, even if I were not a Delta loyalist, even if I were not concentrating on maximizing my, you know, Sky Miles values, all that stuff, the era of my life where, for example, uh, I went to France and in order to save maybe $150 on the plane ticket, uh, my girlfriend and I, who we lived in DC at the time, bought tickets in and out of JFK because they were cheaper than the ones going to DC, which necessitated us taking a bus to Penn Station and then from Penn Station take you know, the subway to JFK. So first of all, just by getting to and from the JFK airport from DC, like already the savings were completely eliminated. So that made no sense on a financial front. But also we had no idea how the subway worked and what, you know, express versus local trains were. So on our way back from France, we took a local train from JFK to get to Penn, to Penn Station and missed our bus back to DC and had to sleep in Penn Station, which trust me is one of the last places on this planet you want to be sleeping. <laughs> But either way, I've done all those types of flights. I've done flights with like crazy, crazy layovers and like random areas where like it's just long enough to be terrible, but not even long enough to like have lunch in the city. Um, I've flown on like those rickety ass, like spirit Ryanair, like we flew on this one. <laughs> Actually, truly bleak anecdote, um, flying to our wedding in 2018, my husband and I, um, we were like trying to save money where we could because it was obviously an expensive year. So we flew on this airline that I think is defunct now that was called like Yowza. <laughs> where like, it was truly, it wasn't wow, it was a different one. And it was truly the most awful flight experience of my life. They would not even give you water. Like we multiple times asked for water and I'm pretty sure legally they were obligated to give us water and just like didn't give a shit about us. So they never did. Um, but no water, no food, no nothing. And we had uh, TV screens in front of all of us, but because we were in the, like the poor seats, the TV screens didn't work. Like you couldn't actually play any TV or movies on them, but you also couldn't turn them off. It was an entire, six hour flight from New York to Barcelona with blaring red screens that just like flashed like the Yauza logo <laughs> in your face. And this was an overnight flight. So we were like desperately trying to sleep and couldn't because of these screens. So all of this is to say like in these instances, I maybe saved 50 bucks <laughs> or so. <laughs> for in exchange for an experience that was truly, truly nightmarish. And to me, I'm always like, I would rather just pay a tiny bit more money 
or just quite honestly, not go to certain things. Number 11 is skinny jeans. At some point in the recent past, I realized like, I just don't have the body type where skinny jeans are really my sort of jeans. Like I shouldn't be wearing them. I am not here to body shame myself or anyone else, but I think that skinny jeans have, they've like, there is a tyranny of skinny jeans. Like I don't understand, like I don't think we necessarily need to be doing like the low slung, you know, whale tail hip hugging, you know, boot cut jeans that everyone was wearing in 2004. Like, I don't think we need to go back there. But I also feel like from like the, the year 2008 to now, it's like skinny jeans or nothing. And everyone is wearing them and there's basically no other options. And I feel like that's really unfair because while some people look great in skinny jeans, like if you are very tall and have like long slender legs, like it's a great look for you. It's like a model look, it's awesome. But for most of us, like other cuts of jeans probably look better. Like I personally like jeans that are like wide legged or like I like flared jeans. Or even I have some jeans now that are just like straight cut. So they're like not, you know, sucked along your entire leg down to the ankle. And I feel like, uh, resentful that I have to go so far out of my way to find non-skinny jeans. What is the deal? What's the deal with skinny jeans? Anyway, um, <laughs> losing my mind. Um, suffice to say though, I hit a certain age and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wear the jeans that look good on me even if they're not the fashionable jeans. Is this how people end up wearing mom jeans? Probably, but I'm fine with that because I am tired of the tyranny of whatever happens to be in fashion. So maybe the broader point on this one is wearing what looks good on me and feels good, not what's necessarily gracing the covers of whatever you people are reading. Lastly, cover your delicate ears, boys. We're about to talk about something ladylike. Uh, padded bras, don't buy them anymore, don't wear them anymore. I feel like that's another thing that like, is part of just growing up and becoming comfortable with yourself. So here's like a fun fact for all the non boob havers out there. Like sometimes women buy and are frankly encouraged to buy by, you know, media and advertising and everything bras that are like very structured and, f and have like padding or like foam core inside of them to like, not only make your boobs look bigger, obviously, but also like, you know, give them a very round shape and this, that, and the other. They're not very comfortable. They always feel awkward under clothes because it's like, why am I wearing like, you know, essentially these like whoopee cushions under my, under my shirt. Um, but also, I mean, they're essentially a, a lie, right? Like they're a deception. They're, you know, not real. And I feel like I kind of reached an age where I was like, you know what? I am who I am. I have the measurements and proportions that I have. I am not gonna be out here like, creating a fiction for the benefit of people who have to come into contact with me. Also, not to be too intimate, but I'm married now. I've, I've been with my husband for 10 years. Who am I fooling? What, what is he gonna be like, what, every time? You know what I'm saying? Like, at a certain point, I just feel like padded bras are, we gotta grow out of them. But you know what, in all seriousness, if that's, if that's your journey, if that's what you like, um, more power to you. For me, it just felt like I think I'm done with this era of my life. And generally speaking, uncomfortable lingerie in general. I just, life is too short and I am much too grown to be doing that. In any case, I hope that you have settled into an age where you are making better purchases for yourself and focusing on the things that actually bring you value. As I mentioned, this video is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. They are here to help you reach your savings goals. And if you're looking for an easy way to finally start investing what you save, check out Fidelity. And as always guys, thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to come back every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday for new and awesome videos. Goodbye.